Okay, you're going to be carb resistant, right? You're going to be if someone's constantly turning a fan on, you're going to hear the fan, the white noise, and you're going to become resistant to it. But if that fan turns off every once in a while and it turns back on, you're going to hear it a lot better, right? Well, that is carb sensitivity in a nutshell. It's easy to be fearful of overdoing the carbs. Okay, anyone that's consciously paying attention to their diet is always making sure they're right in that checks and balances of just enough carbs, not too many that you spill over and not so little that you don't have performance. We're always trying to find that balance. So what if I told you that there are things that you can do to improve your carbohydrate sensitivity, your ability to utilize carbohydrates so that you don't run as much of a risk of spilling over or not utilizing them and just leading to potential fat accumulation. Well, there are some things. So this video is going to give you tools that you can use. Use all of them, use one of them, use two of them, it doesn't matter. You can implement all of them because these are things that are going to help you out over the long term to be more carb sensitive. I largely practice a low carb diet, but I like to be able to have my carbohydrates and know that my body is utilizing them when I do consume them. And I wanna be able to share the details on how to do that with you. I do wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button. We have new videos dropping daily with all kinds of knowledge bombs like this one. And also hit that bell icon to turn on notifications. Now, full disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I'm just some guy on the internet and I lost 100 pounds and I know some biochemistry and I like to share it. So anyhow, let's jump into the first thing that you can practice. You might already follow this channel because you like intermittent fasting and this is probably the leading fasting channel, but let's at least talk about this for a second. Two days per week of intermittent fasting will make it so that longer term, you utilize carbs better. Oftentimes we think with fasting, we're only going to be able to utilize the carbohydrates more effectively at the end of a fast. Well, that's not the case. The Journal of Proteomics published a study based on the fact that fasting increases something really cool called tropomyosin. Tropomyosin is usually associated with cardiac health, but they found in these fasting studies that this increase in particular protein called tropomyosin, particularly TPM3, has an effect on insulin sensitivity over the longer haul. You see, this TPM3 plays a role in what is called glucose homeostasis. That means it's helping the body maintain normal levels of glucose. So if glucose gets too high, it's a protein that's gonna regulate and start dictating to the cells to take some glucose in so things stay balanced, i.e. utilizing carbs better. Well, this study took a look at subjects and it had them do 20 hour fasts every other day for just 15 days. Well, they found that that alone was enough to increase adenopectin levels significantly. Now, adenopectin is also correlated with utilizing fats for fuel and with whole body insulin sensitivity. So when we see adenopectin go up, we know our body is shifting into that fat burning mode where it's utilizing carbs better in the proper way. So point being, a couple days of fasting has a different effect outside of just insulin sensitivity. It has an effect on creating these proteins or activating these proteins that make you more sensitive to carbs over the longer haul. It's worth making a note right now, if you're interested in fasting, there's a link down below for Thrive Market. Thrive Market's an online membership-based grocery store, but the reason I mention it is I have a specific fasting bundle. So it's groceries that I recommend people use if they're practicing intermittent fasting, things they can break their fast with, they can eat during their eating window. Anyhow, since this is such a fasting channel, I figured it's relevant. So go ahead and check them out. They deliver groceries right to your doorstep, super convenient, super easy. Big supporter of this channel, I love them to death, so definitely check them out down below in the description as soon as you're done with this video. They are a game changer. Next thing that you can do is take two weeks out of your life to stop snacking, strictly. Draw a line in the sand, okay? No snacking, strict meals. Two, three, four meals throughout the day, whatever you wanna do, but no snacking. Not a single peanut, not a single piece of kale, okay? The reason is, is in between meals is our time to reset. It is our time for glucagon levels to come up and insulin levels to come down, therefore resetting your body's ability to process carbohydrates. Interesting study published in the journal Diabetologica, 54 patients that had type 2 diabetes, okay, so patients that don't process carbohydrates well. They had them eat either six meals per day or two meals per day, okay? Now, they ate the same amount of food and they ate the exact same macronutrients, same protein, fats, and carbs. The results were pretty cool, okay? Body weight decreased in both groups, all right? But the two meal a day group lost 8.1 pounds versus the six meal a day group losing five. Wait, I thought more meals was better. Nope, turns out that if you eat the same amount of food spread out over two larger meals, it's better. Now what I found was really cool about this study was the oral glucose insulin sensitivity scale 
was much better for the group that ate two meals per day, meaning they were more carb sensitive. Their body utilized or responded to carbohydrates better. They responded to the food better. They were more sensitive to it. So this indicates that yes, they had a better body composition effect, but they probably had a better carb utilization effect. Makes sense. You're not constantly knocking on the door with carbs. Okay, you're gonna be carb resistant, right? You're gonna be, if someone's constantly turning a fan on, you're gonna hear the fan, the white noise, and you're gonna become resistant to it. But if that fan turns off every once in a while and it turns back on, you're gonna hear it a lot better, right? Well, that is carb sensitivity in a nutshell. This next one I'm just gonna to touch on for a second. Proper exercise. People think that cardio is going to be the best way to become carb sensitive. Not the case. It can lower your glucose and it will lower your glucose via utilization of type one muscle fibers in the short term. But longer term, if we wanna be more carb sensitive, we wanna do heavier resistance training. Simply put, it helps the carbohydrates have a place to go. It improves glycogen synthase, improves the storage of carbohydrates going into the muscle. Not gonna spend a lot of time on that because it's fairly well known. Point is, incorporate some resistance training two to three days per week and you will be amazed at how your body sucks up carbohydrates better. Now a few supplements and then one more interesting hack utilizing monounsaturated fats like olive oil. Okay, first one, chromium. Okay, 1,000 micrograms of chromium does wonders. I've done videos talking about taking chromium surrounding cheat meals. Okay, chromium improves the activation of what is called a GLUT4 transporter. A GLUT4 transporter sucks up glucose from the bloodstream and brings it into a cell. It's a little net, okay? It goes to the edge of the cell and it sucks it up. Chromium improves the activation of that and also increases the number of it. So chromium is something that you take not regularly, but when you know you had too many carbs. Okay, so it's more of a damage control kind of thing. Now something that you can take that's going to help you over the longer term is going to be zinc. You see, zinc binds to the insulin receptor, meaning that it is going to act like insulin on a cell, but without insulin being present, which means it gives your body a break from having to pump out insulin therefore allowing you the opportunity to become sensitive once again. Remember, if the cell's constantly getting hit with insulin, it's gonna become, you guessed it, insulin resistant. But if we give it a break from insulin by using a proxy, in this case zinc, then we're not taxing the cell with insulin, we're taxing the cell with zinc, so it remains uh, having a high affinity for the insulin when that does come along. Then we have magnesium. Everyone should have magnesium in their arsenal. This regulates the insulin signaling pathway. So this regulates the telephone call to the pancreas to produce insulin at the proper time. Rather than just a knee-jerk reaction of picking up the phone and hammering the 911 button, this is more of having the control to pick up the phone and know how much to modulate and how much to send out. Magnesium regulates a lot of those pathways as well as about 300 other ones in the body. This next one is a little bit more of a biohacking thing. So it might be a little complex, but it's pretty cool science. We want to activate the AMPK pathway. Okay, AMPK is an energy sensor within your body. When AMPK is activated, it means that you are low on calories and your body has to start utilizing stored fuel. Well, it turns out that when this pathway is activated, there is a cascade of hormones and a cascade of different genetic triggers and transcription that occurs. Basically, the body is saying, oh, we're under some stress, so it starts activating all these processes. Well, when that happens, it increases insulin sensitivity. Well, you increase AMPK or you activate AMPK via fasting, via lower carb diets, via longer duration exercise. There's lots of ways to do it. Even things like green tea and coffee can somewhat activate the AMPK pathway. So yes, you can manipulate that all you want, but what's really interesting is they've found that utilizing monounsaturated fats heavily in the diet, so avocado oil, olive oil, some sesame oil, things like that, monounsaturated fats can trigger an adenopectin release that triggers a very specific response in the body. This whole process is called insulin-induced tyrosine phosphorylation of the insulin receptor. It means that when we are exposed to enough of the good oil, it's going to trigger the receptor site on a cell to become more sensitive, similarly to how it would with AMPK pathways being activated. So the point is, if you take some days out of the week where you really limit saturated fats, you really limit even the polyunsaturated fats, and you go overboard on the monounsaturated fats, it has a pretty powerful effect at increasing overall full body carb sensitivity, which means means at the muscular level, your muscles are gonna soak up nutrients. They're gonna soak up 
the glucose and therefore it's going to go to the muscles versus be circulating in the body all the time. Anyhow, that's just a fun little nerdy biohack trick. As always, make sure you're checking out Thrive Market down below and keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.